Good day! We bring you the latest updates from the PNA Newsroom. In a bid to accelerate the country's digital transformation, House Speaker Ferdinand Martin Romualdez vowed to work with fellow lawmakers for the immediate passage of the E-Government and E-Governance Act. At the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. highlighted the need for digitalization to sustain the country's growth momentum. As such, Romualdez assures the commitment of the House of Representatives in passing Marcos's priority legislations. That includes measures for digitalization in both government and private transactions. Romualdez, who is also part of the official delegation to the WEF, said the establishment of the framework for digital transformation will fuel the development in the country. Suspended Bureau of Corrections Chief Gerald Bantag and 11 others are facing criminal complaints over alleged torture, grave threat, grave coercion, oral defamation, and obstruction of justice. Six corrections officers identified as Richie Canha, Lazaro Rafols, Jer Mojado, Eddie Jimenez, Roy Gacasa, and Asher Labrador filed the criminal complaint this morning at the Department of Justice. Aside from Bantag, former Bucor Deputy Security Officer Superintendent Ricardo Zulueta, former Bucor Spokesman Gabriel Chaklag, Jail Guards Jefferson Bonas, Victor Pasqua, Bayani Aliaga, Rose Marie Casion, Joel Arnold Canoy Latot, Ave Akilit, Edgar Angeles Jr., and Michelle Marzan were also named as respondents in the case. Meanwhile, Bantag's preventive suspension has been extended for another 90 days with the filing of another administrative case against him. The latest administrative charge arose from the interview made by Sunshine Media Network to a high-profile inmate, retired General Vito Palparan, on March 30, 2022. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulla said the interview was granted without complying with the approval process for a person deprived of liberty. Bantag is currently suspended for his alleged involvement in the killing of broadcaster Percival Percy Lapid Mabasa and an inmate who had supposedly brokered the assassination from behind bars. The amount of damage to infrastructure and agriculture due to a low-pressure area, shear line, and northeast monsoon since January 2 has reached more than 620 million pesos. The Office of Civil Defense said infrastructure damage was placed at 206 million pesos in Mimaropa, Bicol Region, Central Visayas, Northern Mindanao, Davao Region, Soxargen, and the Bangsamoro Region. Agriculture damage was estimated at 414 million pesos in Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, Mimaropa, Western Visayas, Eastern Visayas, Northern Mindanao, Davao Region, and Soxargen. Meanwhile, the OCD counted damaged houses at 1,661. 33 people were reported dead, 7 are missing, and 12 others were injured. The OCD also said over 415,000 families were affected and about 65,000 families have been displaced. The Commission on Elections is opening two more sites for voters' registration in connection with the October 2023 Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections. Comelec spokesperson John Rex Laudianco said National University in Manila and the Department of Social Welfare and Development will be hosting the listing of qualified voters for the Register Anywhere Project or RAP. The Manila University is holding a one-day registration today from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The DSWD will be hosting the registration of voters on Monday, January 23. The Senate building will also be a RAP site on January 25. On the other hand, the last schedule for RAP sites in selected malls will be on January 21 and 22. Laudianco said a total of 4,077 applications have been processed in various RUP sites as of January 18, 2023. And that's the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. 
We are also shown on the social media pages of the Presidential Communications Office and Radio Filipinas RP1. Stay tuned for more news updates. I'm Marita Muahe. We tell stories that inspire change.